Hi everybody, this video tutorial series will discuss how to create a character control rig for a 3D character model in Maya. This will be a continuation of some of the previous tutorial series of modeling this character and then UV mapping and texturing this character. So uh, this part one will discuss how to uh, organize and set up your scene so that we can start rigging the character. And then we'll discuss how to use the joint tools to create specific skeletal joints in uh, two major different ways. Uh, so this series will discuss how to create a fully custom character control rig and then also using an auto rigger, one that comes with Maya as far as the quick rig tool. So I'll show you both ways of being able to create a character rig within this series. From the previous video series, uh, I've used the Unreal's mannequin model and skeletal system as a basis for the scale and proportions and uh, I'm also going to use that base setup of the joints uh, so that way if you wanted to we could pull this into a game engine as well. So I've modeled my character roughly the same scale and proportion as the mannequin character. If I hide the body of the mannequin character you can see how the joints are set up. I have these in a separate layer. <coughs> Uh, so this one has a couple of extra joints such as the hand, uh, gun, and then the left hand. Uh, and then we also have a hand root and then the overall root. So we're not going to do those specific joints. But if you look at the overall joint setup for the body, we're going to follow a system that's pretty similar to this. Um, so this has uh, particular joints for the upper body, the torso, and the legs. We also have a root joint. And then we have some twist joints within the arms as well. Uh, we also have individual finger joints and some base joints for the head and the neck. So we're going to follow a similar joint system uh, so that way you can pull this into a game engine as well. So the first step of rigging a character is to set up the joints or the skeletal system that will drive the motion of the bones. So that's what uh, these are in Maya. These uh, are how Maya visualizes joints or bones. Maya calls them joints, other software calls them bones. Uh, we're referring to the same thing, uh, but uh, Maya refers to them as joints. So when you click on them, we select the rotational point of that bone. So that's why we're going to refer to them as joints here in Maya. <clears throat> okay, so that is the uh, mannequin's geometry and joints. Uh, and it's good to have some kind of basis, some starting. Uh, knowledge of where you want this to go scale and proportion wise before you start working on your own character rig. So we rig characters so that way we can animate them. We have set up the model so that way the body is in a T pose, the arms are parallel, parallel to the shoulders. I'm going to hide my cloth for a second. Um, so the arms will be parallel to the shoulders here uh, and the feet are shoulder length apart. Uh, we have a little bit of a forward bend of the knee, which is nice. We may need to correct that a little bit uh, if you want to do what's called inverse kinematics. Uh, so forward kinematics are when we move or rotate every individual joint one at a time. Uh, that works for most upper body motions, uh, but whenever we need a force applied against the body part, such as like stepping on a ground, picking your foot up and stepping and planting the foot, or pushing off of a wall, doing push-ups, or walking up a ladder, or climbing a ladder, uh, then we need what's called inverse kinematics. So inverse kinematics are when we uh, tell a 3D software to have an end effector, kind of like a marionette's uh, string attached to the wrist. So uh, we'll have a control at the end of the wrist that will be able to move the entire arm. For that purpose, we might need to make an adjustment slightly to the forward bend of the knee and the forward bend of the elbow. Um, so we're going to talk about kind of organizing the character, cleaning up the character, positioning it a little better so that way we can animate the character successfully or set up the character for animation successfully. So what I'm going to do is go to soft select and I'm also going to make sure object X symmetry is on make sure that is working. So object X symmetry, so that way when I make an adjustment to one side of the body, it is going to do it to the other side of the body as well. So what I need to do is, is have the knee kind of bent forward a little more. Now this will stretch the character a little bit, but uh, that's fine because we do want to make sure that the character does uh, 
animate how we want to. And a straight leg is not going to animate properly. We need a little bit of a forward bend. So let's increase my volume more. 30 maybe. And what I'm going to do is just move the knee forward. Maybe I'll move it down a little bit. Okay, I need the hip to be further back in the z-axis. I need the knee to be further forward in the knee axis. Um, so maybe we'll roll this back a little and keep moving it around. And what we don't want to do is just have weird um, deformation in the body. Like this is too much of a curve. So what I might want to do is come in here and kind of just straighten things up a little bit. But we need that knee to bend forward. Uh, so that way the uh, ankle is behind the knee and the hip is behind the knee vertically. We don't need a huge bend. We just need enough so that that knee is forward compared to the ankle and the hip. So I'm going to put the hip about right here. We'll put the ankle somewhere down here uh, out of those two points. And the knee needs to be forward um, more than what those two position points are for those joints. So soft select is a really good tool to uh, manipulate larger areas of the body. We want to do the same thing for the elbows as well. We want a slight forward bend in the elbows. Um, I'm going to select like these vertices and use the shift period to grow my selection. And then we'll turn soft select back on. Let's go to a top view for this. And what we really need to do is rotate that elbow back. So let's uh, do 10, rotate it back, move it forward. I'm going to need to kind of not have as much of the elbow selected. There we go. I'm going to blend that back some. So we will uh, rotate and move it back forward. Okay. We need a slight bend in that elbow. Otherwise, it is not going to work. So that should work there. We just need that elbow to bend forward so that the wrist is more forward in the z-axis again compared to the elbow and the shoulder. The shoulder can really still be uh, parallel to the elbow. You know what, what we could do is come in here and uh, rotate this back and move it back some, something like that, so that the elbow is behind the shoulder. Uh, but overall, we need to have a forward bend in the knee and a forward bend in the elbow. Those are the two major areas that we need to make sure we have bent in the geometry modeling standpoint before we start rigging uh, because those are called hinge joints uh, in a human skeletal system. So anytime we have a hinge joint like the elbow and the knee, we need to determine that bend angle. Otherwise, it could flop the knee backwards and have like a chicken leg or it could make the elbow bend backwards in an unnatural way. So to prepare for rigging, we need to make sure elbows and knees are already slightly bent in the direction that they need, they need to bend or animate within. Um, let's turn off soft select and turn off symmetry. So sometimes we need to kind of correct some of the geometry before we set up the joints for the body here. All right, two other things that we're gonna do before we start creating joints uh, is we're going to select all of our geometry and I'll unhide my cloth as well because I'll eventually show cloth also. We're going to um, select all of our geometry pieces. Let's make sure our cloth isn't clipping. So considering we adjusted the arm geometry a little bit, our cloth is now um, uh, clipping a little bit. So we'll just move this up some, move it forward a little bit and up. We go. We might need to select a little bit back here, scale it out a little bit, move it up. So I'm just trying to make some uh, small adjustments so that we don't have any clipping going on anymore. There we go. Now let's look at it. Okay, still a little clipping going on back here, so I'm gonna um, just make a couple of fine-tune adjustments this back out. Sorry right, if this is not particularly symmetrical with the other side of the body. Okay. So we got a little bit right. Oh, now that's the whole of the geometry. So I think that's pretty good to start with. All right, so first off, we want to make sure is that our geometry is set and ready for rigging. 
the next thing we want to do is before we rig any object, uh, even set up the joints, we want to make sure we go to edit, delete by type, history, and then uh, we're going to go to modify freeze transformations. So my body, uh, let's see, something, the eyes, the eyes, the eyes have um, some uh, transforms in here that could cause issues as we go into uh, rigging for the joints and everything. So what we're going to do is select all of our geometry and go to modify freeze transformations. What that's going to do is zero out the translate and rotate values and put a value of one for the scale. So modify freeze transformations. Okay. Um, so now we're ready to start uh, rigging the character. Just go ahead and save this out as something different. Instead of textures, we're going to say rig one. Okay. All right, so now we're ready to start rigging. All right, uh, I'm in this video. Uh, the next video, we'll come back and we'll talk about how to create joints, uh, the two major ways to create joints, and start building the body.